even like even early on, I think Russell made a lot of adjustments. Uh, he knows that Brad is a high, high level player that deserves all the attention. And I thought Russell was really doing a good job of finding him. Uh, but I think now it's more of it's it's more. Uh, I think the chemistry has been been pretty good all along, but it's even getting better for Russell knowing when to to pick and choose his spots. But it also helps the the group. You know, we've been together now. Um, you know, we had some we had some games early on that we could control that we didn't do a good job of closing out, and then we had some things that we could not control. But I think now we've we've gotten some things together with some continuity and. I think the guys are getting comfortable with Russell. Russell's a smart player. He's understanding what the guys do. You can tell him, you can watch film, but when you see it on the court, you really get the, the, the instinctual feel on what guys like to do and how they like to get the ball in certain areas. I mean, I heard him over about two weeks ago and then asking Brad, where do you like to catch on your catch and shoots? Where you like to, some guys like it in their shooting pocket. Some guys like it on the left side, right side. Those are things that, you don't even talk to younger players about, uh, especially at the point guard position, because there's so many other things to worry about. But when you've been in the league long as Russell, he sees those things and he understands those things are important for shooters. And uh, it was a couple weeks ago, you said that you can tell when players are watching film and when they aren't. Um, I'm wondering, is that as simple as watching them play or do you have any tricks as a coach to find that out? Because there's that famous um, Jamarcus Russell story where they, sent him home with a blank tape and he said, he came back and said he watched the film and they knew that he didn't. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't. There, there, there's tricks, but we don't want to tell you our tricks, otherwise the players will know. Um, <laughs> we, we, we want them to watch film. It's important. It's any, any edge you can get on the world's greatest athletes and, and players, it, it helps. If you think you're just going to come in as a young player and just play and learn as you go, you're going to have a lot of rough moments. And you can't get you can't get experience um, faster than day by day, but you can help the day by day by working through the the things that you need to work on on the court, in the film room, with your coaches, with your teammates. Those are things that you can't just let slip by and and worry about it. You know, taking place the next day. You got to work on it every day. But film's important. Film's important. We watch it as a group. We watch. I watch it individually with, with players. Our coaches do the same thing and. A lot of times we, we send out a blast on their, you know, on their, on their phone and they get to watch the highlights of them. And it's such a confident thing. You know, sometimes we send out all the good clips to see them making shots, see them doing the right thing. Sometimes it's uh, all some of the things that are correctable, but film's important. A lot of times uh, younger players don't think it's important because they grew up just playing basketball and, and you can't watch film when you're playing you know, 17 uh, AAU games over a weekend, it'd be impossible to watch all the film. But I think as the games in the NBA, you have to watch film. Fred. Scott, some players have, have talked before about how not making an all-star game. Like I think about Damian Lillard when he didn't make the all-star game, he spoke so openly about how that kind of motivated him moving forward. What kind of reaction did you see from Brad last year after not making it, if, if you saw one at all? Uh, I don't know if I actually saw one, saw anything change. He's pretty motivated to come in and improve for five straight years uh, and then being rewarded two out of the five or two out of the four and then hopefully he gets it this year. I think he's always had that self-motivation. I've always told players, he who wins are the self-motivated guys. And if you take, if, it, if you need a, a fan vote, a media vote, a coach's vote, or the coach, you know, always telling you that you got to play harder, you got to work on this, it's going to be short-lived. Brad's self-motivated. And, and I, I like that about him. And I was, I was more disappointed, I thought, than he was. It kind of pissed me off that I saw all the coaches uh, defense against them night in and night out. They're double teaming them. If you didn't think that he was an all star, play him straight up. Uh, so it kind of bothered me. I think they're more than it bothered him. But he handled it like the true champ that he is. He's a he's a pro, and he's very he's very aware of of of, of everything around him. And he knows he knew he knew that he's 
one of the best players in the league last year, and he's been that way for five years now. And he's young enough that you're going to have five more good years in him. And however he wants to play, he's going to be steady after those those years as well. Jeff McDonald. Hey, Scott, I, I hate to take you back to one of the less fun moments, uh, periods of this season, but I cover the Spurs down in San Antonio, and they're in the middle of their first long um, health and safety protocol layoff of the season. I'm just curious, as a coach, uh, what was what did you find to be the most challenging part of navigating that that portion of your season? Oh, man, it was challenging. It was definitely, I had to make myself breakfast for the first time all year. That was the worst part about it. No, I mean, really, it's it's tough. It's because the mental stress that it had on everybody involved and their families, you, you're, unless you're living under a rock, you know all the devastation that the uh, coronavirus has caused worldwide. Uh, a lot of the times it, you react, I mean, people, get it and things happen that you don't even know you have it. And there's obviously death involved. And so you're scared, you're scared, you're worried. Um, but the, uh, you always want everybody to, you know, get over it as quick as you can. And but from a basketball standpoint, it's, a, it's as mentally challenging than I've ever had anything to deal with uh, as a player, as an assistant, as a head coach, there's nothing like I've, I've never had to deal with it before. And I've never had something that I never was able to like look back and take from my past experience or even take from a, another coach's past experience and then to be able to navigate through it. Something that nobody have, nobody's had, you know, we've had some guys on our team had basically two weeks between games, but the, the protocol players that we've had, six or seven of them, had three weeks between games in the middle of January. That's unheard of. Pop was should be able to handle it. He's as smart as anybody in, in any sport, but he's also had some guys that, some other teams that had to deal with this, so he can kind of like uh, play off of that as well. But it's definitely a challenge. It's nothing, I don't want to go through it again. You don't want anybody to go through it. But the main part is just the, the health concern that you're worried about. And the, the guys that you had that were actually in, in the protocols, when they got back, how long did you think it took them to get back their win back, their conditioning, or are they still working through that at this point? I think they're still working through that. Uh, I mean, I don't want to go into specifics of, of which guy is working right. more than others, but I think all of them are still working through it. You can see it. Some guys get winded quick. You know, it's it's nothing like no nobody's ever done. Like I've mentioned it many times. It's not like you have a Charlie horse and you get your treatment. You know, everybody we've we've seen it before. Hey, this is going to be five to seven days. It's going to be two weeks if it's a high ankle sprain or three weeks. If it's a flu, you know, you're going to be you know it's going to be bad for three or four days, and then you're going to make a couple of days that blow off the lungs, and you're going to be back to normal. This is nothing that any of us have ever dealt with, and our guys are still dealing with it. And I mean, just the and then you deal with that once then, then that happens and you kind of forget this because you all we think these guys are just uh, video game players that they don't have emotions. They don't have they, their confidence. You know, when you don't play well and you're winded and you don't shoot the ball well, things don't go well, your team's not playing well, you lose confidence. So that's another the mental aspect of it that you have to deal with that a lot of guys are dealing with it that's had it during this season. The few players that had it are the few teams that had the outbreaks like we have. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Neil. Hey, Scott. I remember early uh, seasons here, you had talked about, you know, when you guys go out west, you guys try and maybe look at the sleep and different things like that, the medical to, you know, try and make the transition as seamless as possible. One, how are you guys approaching that this time ahead of this trip? And two, given that you guys, you know, can't do a lot of stuff in person, do you guys try and do any kind of like virtual activities as a team? Well, we're, we're going to leave early tomorrow. I think our flight's at, I don't know, 11 o'clock. Um, so we're leaving, we're flying out to Portland earlier. It's totally different. I mean, like I, like I said, this year is like no other. All the testing the players have to do and all the coaches have to do. Sleep, uh, you just try to get it as much as you can. When you get in late, you still got to get up early. 
Uh, some players are testing twice a day. So those early morning calls were, you know, or flights that you get into the next night, next city, 3 a.m. You still got to have your test sometimes by, I think, 8.30. So no matter what, it's, it's just, you just can't, you can't really prepare. I mean, we have, we've met with uh, sleep experts and, and, but your, your rhythm is off. There's just no way around it in a normal uh, West Coast trip in a normal NBA season. But this is like no other. These testing, it's, it's, it's hard on your sleep. It's hard. It's hard to get a rhythm. Um, but so you just try to make, make the best of what we have and not make excuses along the way. I will right, we'll take a couple more. Ava? Scott, kind of on that note, what, I guess, how do you game plan for making sure the good things that you guys have done this week carry over the West Coast trip? Did you discuss any of that in, in practice today? No, we just, we, you know, with the weather conditions that it was, we just wanted to make sure, like we told the guys last night, take, we had to come in and get tested. We probably, you know, wouldn't have had, you know, maybe wouldn't not even had a practice with the weather condition, but we had to get tested, so we wanted to come in, just get some shots up, the low-minute guys, play some three-on-three, three, and then get out of here as quick as we can before, you know, the weather gets worse. I don't know what it is out there right now, but uh, definitely going to be a tough trip. You know, we're playing against four, four of the top teams in, in, in the West on, on their court, um, but we've had some good things. You know, the last couple of weeks, we've had some good things on the defensive end. We, that has to carry over. Uh, the, Portland is, they got the uh, elite players and, and, and Damian, uh, and they got some really good players that are really playing well during this stretch. I think they won five or six in a row. Uh, but we have to, we're going to have to play, we're going to have to actually play better than we have during this stretch to, to compete against these teams on the road. But I, I feel confident. One is that we have our group together. I think we have a better chance to, as everybody knows in the league, if you have your team, you have a better chance to win. We have our team together right now. Alex? Yeah, Scott, you're kind of alluding it to it at the end of that uh, last question. But, uh, you know, I was just going to ask, three three games ago you said that you guys were going to get on a hot streak and get it going, and it seems like that's what's happening in the past three games. Do you think that's mainly a result of everybody getting together? Or is it just you guys – doing what you know this team can do? Or do you think it's something else that, that they've made adjustments and they're turning things on? Or, or is it a combination of both? Oh, I was confident going into the year. And unfortunately, we, we lost some games early on. And we lost them in ways that we can control. And when, when you lose games, the things that you can control, the positive about it is you can get better from it. It's all correctable. It's not player driven. It's, you know, it's experience driven, it's execution driven. So I was confident. And then all, you know, all the things that happen that we can't control, that's just now we're just, we're scrambling and just trying to stay afloat without, you know, losing our confidence. And, and I knew once we get our group back, because I was just going back to what we started the season, we've had a lot of good things, a positive vibe. But I, I think I still feel good about our group. You know, I, I still think, you know, we need, we need, to keep playing games. We still haven't had practices. I think we've had, with our entire group, I want to say two, maybe three in the last 40 days. And that's a long time uh, with, with all the games that we've played. Like today, I wouldn't consider it a practice with shots and low minute guys were playing three on three. But I'm confident in the group. We know we have a tough remaining eight games before our break. And we got to, we just got to keep building and playing well. And, and doing it together. And I think the guys are really doing a great job of that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we'll finish up with Christos. Hello, coach. How are you? Doing great. Great. I would like to ask you about Bradley Bill. What is the biggest difference of his game this season? And what impressed you most about his dedication, about his progress as a leader and stuff like this? Well, I mean, there's, there's so many things that, that you can talk about with, with, with Brad. Uh, one, I think the main thing I always look at guys, is, is this guy a winner? Is he doing the things that it takes to, to, to lead every day? Or, or, or are you doing things just when things are going your way to be a leader? Brad does it all the time. 
and he's had enough share of the things in the last three years that he could not control, but he still he still put his best foot forward and, and led the group. And the mental toughness that he has, the tough, the physical toughness that he has, is, and obviously along with the skill set, uh, makes him the player that he is. And he's he, he's he's exceptional in a lot of different areas of the floor. If you just want to talk about the basketball uh, court alone, him, him being able to handle the ball, being able to be a playmaker, being able to shoot threes off the dribble, being able to shoot threes off the kick, being able to shoot three coming off your left shoulder, your right shoulder, uh, pin downs up the middle, baseline pin downs. He can do it all. And pick and roll game, post-up game. He had one last night. I thought he got fouled on it. Uh, his free throws that, you know, it can get better. He's not at 90% yet. Uh, but I think he does so many good things. And on well, he, he assists, he rebounds uh, defensively. We're getting better as a team. And I think that helps him as well. But he's one of the best players in basketball. And, you know, we're lucky to have him lead our, lead our franchise. Sorry, Coach, I have one more from uh, Zach real quick. So it's like a coach right now. We got one more drill, guys. And then when you finish <laughs> the drill, we got one more. And then when you got one more minute. All right, one more step. What else you got? One more question. All Appreciate right. it, Coach. Um, well, you talked about film study earlier, but when it comes to Rui, what is usually the biggest area of emphasis with him? Are they mostly situational things or? Yeah, you know, I had a good conversation with Rui before uh, we got together as the group. How more he see he's seeing things defensively and it's as simple as just locking in getting in the defensive stance and using your length and it's a hard hit it's like so simple that you think that you can just tell a guy one time and do it but the game is moving so fast for younger players and sometimes you even forget to do the the most basic thing that it, that it is but i think his his activity on the weak side is like in the last two weeks has improved more than any part of his defensive game. And he still needs to close out all the way on shooters. Uh, even, even last night, a few times at the end of the game, but I think those are areas that he's going to have to continue to trust his, his abilities to be able to close out all the way and impact that shot. But I, I like, I like what Corey is or coach Gaines has done with him. He's, done a great job of keeping him confident during a, a lot of the things that he couldn't control. You know, he missed the, the, the first part of the season with the, the eye um, irritation or that he had, and then obviously the COVID thing, but I think he's, he's, he's improving and he's steady. That's what I love about him. He's steady and he's going to continue to improve as the season goes on. Hey, Rui. Um, I, I'm just wondering that that last defensive possession of the game last night, we didn't have a chance to talk to you after yeah. uh, when you're guarding uh, Jamal Murray, when he hits that three, can you, can you take me through what your defensive strategy is there and, and what you're trying to do to rattle him when he's that far from the hoop? Um, you know, our plan was, uh, we just, I think we were switching the one to five um, before, before the ball gets in and uh, after two. And I think I switched on him and then he was kind of far, farther out. But we, our plan was, you know, making, you know, make him shoot like a layup or something, you know? But I told, it was like, he was so far. So like, I didn't get into him, you know? And he shot from the logo and he made it. You, you, you obviously got, guard more more guys your size as opposed to point guards as often is it is it a weird adjustment in ment mentally to have to go that far from the basket to guard a guy in a situation like that i mean yeah like why not these days like you know guys like point guards like they shoot from a logo you know so i don't know i mean for me that's like you know a tough shot, but for those guys, you know, it's it's really easy to make, especially those situations, you know. So I think those are things like uh, I think me and as a team have to adjust, you know. Um, you know that 
the moment, you know, we desperation, we we up by three, and we, you know, we didn't want to give up three, but like you know, he was he was so far out, far out, far out to me, so you know, it was just tough for me to like you know just get into him and then you know uh, just go by. But yeah, yeah, I think uh, I talked to coaches and yeah, we I have to yeah I have to make adjustments for sure. Cool. Thanks, Ray. Chase. Hey, Rui. Um, you were on a, a similar timeline to Davis Bertans coming back from all those games you guys missed. And it seems like he's just breaking out now. Do you feel like you're up to speed yet? Or do you feel like there are parts of your game that you're still trying to work back? Um, I was actually talking to the other uh, to the guys about it. But I, I mean, I mean, feel good. You know? um, I feel like it's since COVID to happen, and I think my body is actually better than before. Um, I think I can move better. Uh, my shape is pretty good. Um, yeah, but I think it's just the game, game, you know, game mind, you know, you just got a little more, you know, we haven't, I was talking to my agent about how I haven't played like actual games, like, you know, <clears throat> consistently, like, you know, last year I got injured. And the bubble thing happened, and this year, like I had a some real virus and corona, so I just want to continue, you know, um, playing these games, and yeah, that's the that's the next goal for me. And in the games that you have played this year, what have you learned about your game and what you want to continue to work on? Um, you know, we just won this past three games, but. Um, I think we start getting together now as a team. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, um, like a team, like kind of more chemistry stuff, you know, on the court. Like, you know, it's really, I know we we have a talent, but we, it's really, it has been honestly hard to like adjust, you know, playing with the Russ, playing with the Brad, playing with the DB, playing with the, you know, other guys. You know, it just take a time, you know, um, we are very, you know, young team and we had a like a two three weeks off and tb got injured and then now we start playing together and then you know we start getting like you know um you know a good team and you know we just gotta build you know we can't slow down from here uh we just gotta be continue you know walk together play together and i think yeah we're gonna be good steve Hi, Rui. Um, you you guys are uh, sort of the poster team for basketball as an international sport, and this league as a very you know global in terms of its composition. Um, you know, we can see where you guys are from on on rosters and stuff. But what is it like for you as a group day to day? I mean, does does the flavor of multiple guys coming from many places does it does it show up in how you go about your jobs? Yeah, it's actually very fun to be around this team, you know, especially like you said, um, there's a lot of people from different countries, um, especially me coming out from Japan. Um, you know, we didn't really have a Japanese NBA player, you know, and then I'm in the team and then there's a lot of, you know, guys from different countries. So it's really, you know, for me, even more comfortable to play with these guys, um, international. Um, just be around. Uh, it's really, you know, it's just like it's a different flavor, you know. It's just a different, um, you know, team. But you know, it's, it's. I think it's good. It's a good thing. Anything you can think of that you've learned from teammates, or maybe you see that they've learned from you about different cultures or values, or or just, I mean, stuff as basic as food choices or music or anything like that. I mean, well, I feel like those guys guys even including me like you know we we've been like you know here for a while you know in the u.s and either i played a college basketball you know so we are more mostly mostly like we almost adjust the culture in here you know the food music anything so it's nothing you know um different i mean we talk about you know like other countries and stuff but you know other than that we kind of like you know adjust this culture 
So, yeah. I'll finish up with Neil and then we'll go to Japanese. Hey, Rui. Obviously, you guys have had such limited practice time availability. And, you know, Russ is such a different dynamic point guard. How have you guys been able to, you know, slowly become more acclimated to his style of play? And how would you compare, you know, from the beginning of the season to where you guys are now? Yeah, like you said, he's one of the best point guards in the league. Um, playing with the guys like him, you know, guys like him, it's very hard for me, especially coming out from college. Last year was my first year, but kind of, you know, this this is almost my first year. You know, I didn't really play last year, so uh, it's really hard to play with a guy like that. You know, he's a super fit. Um, but you know, just communicate with him. You know, I I try to communicate with him. You know, off the court, on the court, about basketball. You know, he talked to me. You know, what he want to do, uh, what he want me to do. So that's the, that that that's actually helping a lot. And uh, watching the film with the coaches, uh, watching the film. Uh, at home, you know, watching the game, um, those kind of stuff. And they've been watching his like the highlights from or like the game from like, you know, past years, you know, those are helping too, you know. Um, just gotta, you know, but the, I feel like a communicate with him is especially like, you know, I think that's helping, I you know, start, start like, you know, playing together. What what are some of the things you communicate about? Scott was talking about like how he passes it to you, where you want it in your shooting pocket and things like that. Yeah, just normal stuff like you know, um, like a win in the transition, like you know, fast break, you know, what where where he want me to be, or like you know, what's he, you know, those kind of stuff, or you know, when he posting up, or when I'm posting up, like what, like you know, those movements and the stuff, you know, spacing, those kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm mean, trying to learn how to play with the guys a little bit, so I feel pretty comfortable. Coach, I mean, coach, make it easy on too. Like he, he just tell me, you know, try to you know play as hard as I can, get guys open, uh, do the little things, just rebound. He said one one quote. Um, he's like, just be a star in, in, in simple things. So like, just you know, just get uh, set good screens, just be solid defensively, and that's what that's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to do. Chase. Hey Alex, um, what's being part of a center rotation where there's three guys and you know maybe not a whole lot separates you guys in the eyes of the coaches and it's it's basically whoever plays the best gets the minutes on any given night. What's it like being part of that? It's fine. It's just you know the, the hardest part is just staying ready because you you don't know like like last game I I haven't played the two previous games and then he put me in whatever for like three minutes into the game. I, you know what I mean? Like I thought the roller going to be the second rotation. So it just the hardest part is just staying ready and just being ready for the opportunity. And you mentioned going in the game last night. What's it like trying to guard Nikola Jokic now? Man, it's a it's a tough guard. I mean, he's so talented and, and he changed his game so much. From I remember playing with, against him like well, five years ago. He was all just you know rolling to the rim, floaters around the rim. Now he's he don't even try to go in in, in a pain. It's all mid range jumpers, threes. You know, still got some of those floaters. So I mean, he's he, he's a hard guard because you can't you can't get to his shot and he can get it off anytime he wants basically. So you're just trying to make it hard and um, make sure he he get a little bit off balance or you know mess with his rhythm. But he he he's a very hard uh, guard for sure. Steve. Alex, hi. Um, I, I asked Rui about this uh, moments ago. I'm, I'm curious, the, the makeup of your team with, with so many players of diverse backgrounds and, and sort of basketball upbringing, uh, it reflects, you know, the global nature of the, the league. What, what do you make of, of your roster, how you guys blend, how you communicate on the basketball floor if it gets down to that? Um, just the fact that, that you're a very, very international squad. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even look at it. You know, er, everybody, you know, we're just old basketball players from different, you know, walks of life, but we got the same goal. Just when we get on the court, you know, play together. And then we got good leadership. Like, we got Ross, uh, Bradley, and, you know, Scott Brooks leading us, leading the way. So we just got to, you know, everybody do their role, do their part. And it's, I don't know, but off the court, I mean, 
I, you don't even realize the guys, guys from different countries. We just, you know, we just play play basketball, basically. Now, you do um, have a great following around the world, I mean, with, with representatives from different countries. And there are probably young players in those countries that are maybe a little more inspired, seeing that, oh, yeah, I, I can dream about the NBA someday. I mean, do you do you feel a little responsibility, or do you at least enjoy that fact that, that you know, you do have that reach? It's a great thing to think about. I, I, I don't even think that, you know, I just – because you be so focused on every day, just on the grind, and then just, you know – I don't, I don't, sometimes you, you just forget to step away and just think about stuff like this. Um, Thank you. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Alex, everyone's been talking about how uh, the good defense is kind of leading to your guys' offensive surge lately. What does it feel like you guys are just able to do better kind of night in and night out on the defensive end? Um, just being together, covering for each other. I think our effort got better too. We just play extremely hard, and then we also cover each other's mistakes. Like when, when somebody messes up, the next guy is there, and they just, we just keep just keep scrambling, keep, keep keep being there for each other, and just keep playing hard. You know, when you when you play hard, and then even if you lose, you, you still feel good about, about yourself. And then I feel like that we've done that last prior last five games. We we play extremely hard. We just got to continue to do that. Mo's mentioned that too, that just that you guys are kind of trusting each other a little bit more on defense as well. What do you think the the turning point for that was? Um, I mean, we're watching a lot of film and just co- <clears throat> Coach Brooks, we just, we had a couple of practices where we literally walked through every, every little scenario and, you know, our principles defensively. And then we just talked about it, like we, that we, we got to trust each other. We got to be there for each other. So like if somebody gets beat, Next man got to step up. Like we just got to, we can't just you know make one one effort and stop playing. We just got to continue, continue playing for the whole shot clock. And then you know we we started doing that more often, and we're seeing the results. And I feel like it just you know we we were building momentum. Christos, hello Alex, how are you? I'm good, Chris. How you doing? Great, great. I would like to ask you what. The- how enjoyable for you to share the court with Bradley Beal? And what impressed you most about his leadership and about his progress so far this season as one of the most dominant guards in, in the league? I mean, yeah, Bradley is amazing. Just what he's, how he, how and what he's able to like, score, the, how he's able to score the ball. And um, he also, like, he's underrated passer too. Like, he, when he gets double team, he's so good at just, you know, making the right play. You know, like some players, when they, you know, they so score like they have that score mentality. They sometimes force some tough shots, but he he don't do that. He when he when he sees a double team, he gets off on time, and which just makes easier on other guys to make play on the weak side. But he's he's amazing. He just he plays hard. He, he and he, you know, as much as energy he spends on offense, he also plays. You know, he 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 brings effort defensively too. He plays so hard. So, and the guys see it, and then just you know, it gets guy get gets guys going around him. And also about his leadership role, how he supports you and how he, what he told you when the, the results are, are bad and you didn't play with, about your potential as a team. Uh, I mean, he always, he don't speak a lot, but when he do, like everybody listens, he's one of those guys. So uh, when he, he's, 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 he's more quiet, but when he speaks, everybody, you know, everybody take it, per, take it serious. And um, I mean, he he makes comments here and there, but it's a, he's always on point, and he, he's a straight shooter. He'll let you Thank know. You very much. All right, last question from Alex. Hey, Alex. Um, you know, you've been with the team a short time, but ha- have you noticed a, a big difference in the last three games in this recent stretch? And and you know, do you think you guys are, you know, reaching a good point with chemistry and trending in the right direction right now? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, you can see our effort. We're playing together, kind of, you know, it just, it seems more fluid, right? Like, just everybody just moving, everybody in the right spots, defensively playing together. It's just more, it's just more fluid with guys making shots. And we're playing hard, so we just got to continue doing it. And, you know, we, we're going to live with the results. And one other question um, real quick. Uh, has it been nice being back in the Maryland, D.C. area for you and have you? Have you, have, have you been able to follow the, the Maryland basketball games this season? And I'm guessing that, you know, in normal years, would you have gone to a game in College Park by now at this point? 
Oh yeah, hundred percent. But I mean, it's great to be back. It's just the, the the only thing sucks is the the COVID, so you can't go nowhere like restaurants. And I mean, we're not allowed to. So that that that, that part sucks. But um, I haven't catch a lot. I think I only watched one game this year. Um, but I I, I kind of stopped watching games since we, after they went to uh, Big Ten. I mean, I watch the games here and there, but I miss those you know old rivals like Duke and UNC when I was there. So. But I, I still try to catch up when I talk to Charge here and there. So um I gotta I gotta go over there and just talk to talk to the coach and staff and see some guys.